There are several ways to draw arrows in Photoshop. Let's start with the simplest method. For example, let's draw a couple of arrows to emphasize this cat and this bird. We can start the process by clicking and holding on the rectangle tool. We'll get the shape tools menu. We can go down and select the custom shape tool. Its icon is sort of an obese star. If we go to tool mode and make sure that is set to shape. We can select our fill color. Red is always a good color to draw attention to something. We can select the stroke color. I usually choose none. Now this is the custom shape picker. And as you can see, there are a lot of shapes to pick from, almost too many. In this case, we know we want an arrow. We can go to the menu, to the gear, and choose arrows. Yes, we want to replace these shapes. And now we see only arrows. If these shapes are too small, we can go back to the gear menu and choose large thumbnail. So let's pick an arrow. Let's pick uh, arrow number nine. Drag an arrow out. If you hold down the shift key, you can see that it constrains the arrow. And this is uh, usually a good thing. If we want to make further changes to this arrow, we can go up to the Edit menu and choose Free Transform Path. That puts a bounding box around the arrow and allows us to transform it in many ways. We can scale it. We can hold down the Shift key as we do this to constrain uh, its proportions. We can rotate it and move it into position. So now let's make another arrow, one to draw attention to this bird. We can change the fill color. Let's pick green. It'll be the same color as the bird. No stroke again. So let's choose this wiggly arrow. Now we can draw another arrow out, drag it, hold down the shift key to constrain it, and let it go. We'll do an apple T to transform it. So we can rotate it. It's too big, so we can hold down the shift key and reduce the size, but maintain proportions. And then move it into position. And we're done. One other thing that you can do is uh, when you're making arrows, drop shadows are often an attractive uh, style to add. Select the shape, then go down to the Add Layer Style menu, click and hold, and pick Drop Shadow from the bottom of this uh, menu. Let's just accept the default by saying OK. And you can see a drop shadow has been added to this arrow. Now we can add the same drop shadow to the first arrow by holding down the Option key and then dragging the FX up to that layer. Now you can see this arrow, as well as the other, have drop shadows. Let's move from pointers to arrows. We may need to add information or labels to a number of objects or specific parts of an individual object. Here, we would like to name parts of this turkey's head. Interconnecting arrows is a good way to do this. The line tool is the workhorse of arrow creation. Let's review how it works. Click and hold on the rectangle tool and select the line tool. Make sure that the tool 
mode menu is set to shape. Let's pick a fill color of blue and we'll leave the stroke set to none. We'll increase the weight of the arrow to 20 pixels. Hold and drag. You can use the shift key to keep it straight. And release. But this is just a line. How do we get it to be an arrow? The key to configuring your arrow is here in this options menu. If you click it, you can see that we can add arrowheads at the start or the end. Let's add one to the end. Hold and drag. And there it is. This time, let's put an arrowhead at the start and not at the end. Click and drag. And now you can see that that's been accomplished. We can even put an arrowhead at either end. Click and drag. Now we have a double arrow. We can also change the shape of the arrowhead. You can see here it's set at 500 and 1000. These are uh, based on the percent of the line weight. Well, let's make the arrowhead twice as big. We'll change this to a thousand. And this to two thousand. Now click and drag. And you can see that we have a much bigger arrowhead. Let's make the arrowhead twice as small. Make this 250, and this 500. Now click and drag. You can see the arrowhead is much smaller. You can also change the appearance of the arrowhead by altering its concavity. The default is zero. Let's change that to 25%. Now drag an arrow. And you can see that that's the appearance. If we add a negative sign to that, say make it negative 25%, now we'll draw an arrow, and you can see now it's convex and has sort of a spear appearance. So that's another way that you can alter the appearance of your arrows. Let's return now to the turkey's head and label it. We'll choose a fill color of black. We'll leave the stroke set to none, and we'll diminish the line weight to seven pixels. We'll configure our arrow so that it has an arrowhead at the end, a width of 400, a length of 600, and a concavity of 10%. So now we're all set up and all we have to do is draw the arrows. For the major car uncle, click and drag. For the minor, click and drag. For the ear, click and drag. So as you can see, once you're set up, you can very quickly drag these arrows. If we drag an arrow for the snood, like so, it leaves something to be desired. 
I think it would be better if we put a simple curve in this. Start by doing the transform, command T. And then this icon toggles between the transform and warp modes. So let's click it, which switches us to the warp mode. Let's choose from the warp type menu, an arc. You can see that it gives us a 50% arc, which is way too much. So we can grab this button and drag it down to decrease the arc to, oh, let's say around 15% or so. Switch back to the transform mode for any final uh, adjustments you'd like to make. Let's shorten this arrow a little bit. Let's uh, drag it a little bit this way. I think that's okay. Then just hit return and you're done with it. The waddle is fairly extensive. What can we do to uh, bring that to the attention of the viewer? Let's start with a double headed arrow. We'll put an arrow head at each end. Drag out a short arrow. We'll transform. Switch to warp mode. Select arc from the type of warp mode. We're going to drag this down and reverse the direction and go to, oh, you know, around 30. Switch back to transform. Rotate. Move into position. Rotate a little more. That's pretty good. Hit return. And now to connect that to the label, we'll go back to our arrow menu and remove any arrowheads. And now just drag from the waddle to the arrow that we just made. And we're finished. For more complex arrows, we need to turn to the pen tool. This is a photo of a knot tying tutorial. We want the viewer to pass this strand over these and then under all of these up through the middle of the knot center and out. Let's draw an arrow to illustrate this. Select the pen tool. Change the tool mode menu to shape. We'll select no fill, a dark red stroke of 15 pixels. Now draw the course of the arrow. Click and drag. Click and drag. Click and drag. Click and drag. And click. And there it is. Now create an arrowhead. Choose the polygon tool. Change the fill to red. Change the stroke to none. And select three sides so that we'll create a triangle. Drag the triangle, transform it, move it into position, rotate it. Make it a little longer, a little smaller, adjust the position a little bit, 
and hit return to finish it. Now let's create a small circle to indicate the start of the arrow. Choose the ellipse tool. Same fill and no stroke. Drag a small circle. Hold the shift key to make it perfect. Move it into position. And you're done. Now we can combine these three shapes into a single arrow. Hide the background layer. Go to Layer. Merge Visible. Now we need to make the arrow go underneath these strands. Start this process by duplicating the background layer and then moving it to the top of the stack and reducing its opacity to 50% so we can see the arrow. Select the polygonal lasso tool and select the parts of the arrow that go underneath the strands. and then finish the selection. This also goes under, so we need to hold the shift key so this selection will be added to the other. Click. And now it's all selected. Now go to the layer, layer mask, reveal selection. Change the opacity back to 100%. You can see the selection isn't perfect, and that's fine because now we can paint on the layer mask with the brush tool using black and white. We can brush out these remnants of red here. And here. And here. And once you're satisfied with the mask, we are finished.